Bokitov Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benoon, and you're watching Israeli News Live. We have picked up today on RT News. It's not actually come out where we can show you this on the internet as of yet, but they are reporting on RT News only moments ago about ISIS, or ISIL as they call it there, in Libya, and how that they are really overtaking the country. The country has been split in half, and the violence there is so massive. They, uh, ISIS has beheaded 23 Christians uh, just recently in the country of Libya. And, uh, and as well, another uh, interesting report that they brought out, they brought a, a uh, man onto the uh, screen there to, that stated, on, this is on RT News, on their television news broadcast, that the United States is to blame for the arming and the creation of ISIS. This was stated, again, on RT News Live. We have not yet had it on their website yet to be able to upload this information for you. We will as soon as we can. We'll load it to Israeli News Live in our Facebook uh, portion there. But he stated that the United States in 2011 was arm were arming the actual rebels that they knew already had terrorist ties. And by doing so, that the United States, this man claimed that the United States actually inadvertently uh, was arming a, a radical regime that would cause all the problems that we are seeing today of, uh, of this Islamic uh, terrorist group ISIS that is going all across the Middle East bringing about tremendous terror. Again, the United States being blamed for this uh, by the, uh, it was a black gentleman that was on there that was, that was accusing the United States of arming ISIS. Uh, and we have also seen other uh, information about this in different broadcasts that we've brought to your attention before. Uh, a couple other things that I wanted to bring to your attention too, and that is that uh, on, on uh, TASS, Russian news agency, uh, Lavrov, who, uh, recently, uh, recent e events in Ukraine resemble Kiev's preparation for hostilities, he is reporting. Uh, he's a Russian foreign minister. Uh, he says, uh, uh, Russia is concerned about the developments in Ukraine, which are reminiscent of Kiev's preparation for hostilities, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said on Monday, following talks with his Iranian counterpart, Mohammad uh, Javid Zarif. As for the situation with the implementation of Minsk agreements of February the 12th, we are really very much concerned about the current state of affairs. He noted, I regularly discuss the issue with my colleagues. The other day I spoke with U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry and George, excuse me, German Foreign Minister Frank uh, Walter Steinmeier. We also conveyed the appropriate uh, assessments to Paris as another country, which uh, along with Germany and Russia is a guarantor of the Minsk agreements. The situation at the front lines is alarming, he states. Uh, the minister went on to say, unfortunately, one may already talk uh, not about the line of contact, but in actual fact about the front line. Uh, talks were underway for a long time in response to calls for Normandy and the for, uh, to demilitarize de 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 uh, Shirinkano and withdraw weapons with caliber under 100 millimeters to a distance of 15 kilometers on each side. The parties could not agree on the issue for a long time because of Kiev's changing stance. Then the militias took some unilateral steps, withdrawing all their units from the uh, Shirikino and pulling back weapons to a distance of three kilometers. We hope that such a goodwill gesture would prompt uh, similar steps by the Ukraine armed forces, but this did not happen. Combatants of the uh, Azvo, uh, excuse me, Azvo, Azov Volunteer Battalion, which were withdrawn from the area, were immediately replaced by the units of the regular Ukraine Armed Forces. There is information that the Marines appeared there as well, which also gives food for thought. Uh, according to the minister, the agreement of the withdrawal weaponry from the line of contact was not signed at the contact group meeting because of the Ukraine side at the last moment changed a stance abandoning the previous agreements. And of course, my question is, is what Marines is he speaking about when he says it gives food for thought? We know that the United States also has their own military troops on the ground in uh, Ukraine there and have actually had soldiers fighting alongside Ukrainians, but dressed in Ukrainian uniforms, but speaking perfect English as if it were Americans. Uh, but now Russia is saying that, that Marines <clears throat> have appeared there as well. And that implies that it is U.S. Marines uh, there on the ground in Kiev as part of this battle. 
uh, d d just leads to a lot of concern on the things that are going on. <clears throat> and, uh, and we have posted uh, many of these articles already on Israeli News Live and our Facebook page there. I encourage you to go and take a look at that. Um, as well, um, let me bring up to, to your attention another issue here. Um, and this one here, now this article here is uh, actually came out here on the 16th. says, uh, this is on the Moscow Times, are Russia and NATO preparing for war? Uh, Russia and NATO military exercises are starting to look more like preparations for war. The only ray of hope is that the brandishing of weapons is generally a sign of weakness, uh, not strength. The authors of the European Leadership Network think that Tank Report published last week regarding a March exercise to test the combat readiness of the Russian army and NATO exercise carried out in July in the Baltic states and Poland saw these actions preparations for armed conflict. The author goes into several other issues there, uh, stating that you're really trying to get both sides to think about what they are doing in, in regards to this particular conflict before it spirals out of control into a massive all-out war. Uh, one other thing, and this was kind of interesting when I saw this article here on RT News, uh, made me think of, of uh, Pastor Paul Bagley and his news broadcast when he does the what? Are you serious? Because, Brother Paul, this is definitely one of those types of articles here. Space Age Tower of Babel is what the article is entitled. Canadian company patents 20 kilometer lift to heavens. Uh, and it shows a, uh, the animation and, and a video as well on this article about a tower that the Canadians have gotten a U.S. patent for for building a tower that leads up all the way up into the uh, space atmosphere in order for, uh, to be able to send supplies to outer space much cheaper. Uh, says uh, uh, NASA is testing a robot with uh, uh, sticky uh, gecko feet. Uh, last month, uh, uh, this, yeah, a towering structure rising 20 kilometers in the air with its top in the sky may sound like something out of an Old Testament passage of science fiction novel, but a Canadian space company has proposed just that to cut the cost of space exploration. A uh, very interesting article to look at, uh, but you know, when I looked at this, one of the things that I thought about is that the Tower of Babel may not have really been so much as a tower that could reach up to the heavens, uh, but was more of a dimensional type of tower, reaching that type of heaven, going into another dimension, much like what CERN is today. CERN is trying to break into another dimension. So if there's a true Tower of Babel, it happens to be underground in CERN, not so much this one here. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom.